Why LOL graphical designers are going crazy because AI can produce decent pictures now, programmers invented wipe coding and are chilling now. So by the end of this video you will learn what is wipe coding and how to use it properly to be successful with it. So the first question is what is wipe coding at all? And as you can see in Wikipedia, it's an AI dependent programming technique where a person describes a problem in a few sentences as a prompt to a language model tuned for coding. And most importantly, it shifts programming role from manual coding to guiding, testing and refining AI generated source code. Which basically means that wipe coding is coding mostly without writing code, but just by guiding AI. And what I see from my experience and from a lot of other programmers, they have a huge problem in guiding AI. So what is this problem? You just ask AI something, you are getting some answers and they are correct. Then you start using it more and more and you are getting wrong answers. Because AI will be correct like in 80 to 90% cases and then it will fail in that 10%. At this moment developers stop relying on AI because they understand that it can't give them perfect code. But actually this is totally fine. We just need to build a correct structure how we are working with AI so we can leverage it, not suffer with it. And if we are talking about wipe coding, you need to have a correct tool. For example, ChatGPT in this case is not a best solution because it can't auto-generate code in your project. Additionally to that, it can't read all your files in the project to create or update your code. Which actually means you need to use something like Corsa AI or GitHub Copilot or whatever tool you prefer but it must be able to read your project and generate code for you. And before we even start coding, there is a huge ton of problems that we are getting while working with AI. It can make up some stuff which does not exist in the library for example, or remove already existing code and replacing it with completely new code. This is why for example with Cursor we can use Cursor rules where we are describing how our AI must work. And there are two different things that I prefer to write in my cursor rules. First of all, something like this. Here we have basic rules, which are just a must for any developer. First of all, it must look on the existing code before creating a new code. It should not drastically change your code while trying to implement something. It should avoid code duplication, prefer simpler solutions and not introduce new patterns or technologies while fixing bugs. It must keep your code base organized and not touch code that is not related to the task. So basically what we can do, we can simply copy all these rules and in the root of our project we must create dot cursor rules and just paste them inside. But it is not all, we can do more, there is an amazing project or some cursor rules where you can go and download rules for your specific stack. Like for example here, let's say we are going with Angular framework and TypeScript. We can click on it here and here are also some rules, which are more related to Angular. Like for example include all required imports, obey rules defined in Pretty and ESLint and some restrictions like we should not have lines longer than 80 characters. Basically, if you like this, you can just copy it and paste in our course rules file. If you don't like some rules, obviously you can update it. It will improve tremendously your work with AI and it will be much better in terms of what you are getting from it. And now you think, okay, it is time to write code. This is not true, this is too early. If you are implementing some project, the first step that you need to do is write a plan. Because when you have an entire plan of your whole project, you can just go one feature by another and not implement all of them together. This is why I will write something like this. So here we explained to AI the whole project on a really detailed level. We explained every single action and all behaviors that we have in our application. Additionally, I explicitly wrote that it should not generate code for us, but just write a bullet list of planned tasks. And here we got exactly what we need, like project setup, API integration, question display and so on. The idea is to save this list to some markdown file that you will use while implementing the project. And you are just going one step at a time to generate some code with AI. 
Like for example, project setup create necessary components. You just focus on this line, you are asking AI to generate these components, and you are trying to experiment. Let's try to do at least one task of this list. So I will ask it to create all these components in Angular application. At this moment we can start to run commands and apply our code to check if it is working at all. And obviously in order to do vibe coding you must be able to easily read code and understand if it is correct or not. And here is an extremely crucial step that you must do in order to succeed with vibe coding. After every successful change you want to commit your changes to git. You just applied something like a structure of your project, you see that it is working, you should just immediately commit it. You should not ask AI the next feature, which will for sure change your code or maybe even break it. You need a state to which you can roll back if AI changes is not good enough. And a lot of people are skipping the steps and then they can't revert their changes. And they can't stress this enough, you must develop just a single thing at once, which means one specific task. Don't start doing your component and then jump into the service and so on. You want a small isolated change that you can test and only then jump to the next one. And additionally to that, after every single task, you want to ask AI to generate tests. You can simply write something like cover components with tests. And most of the time it is doing it quite good and your application will be much safer just because you covered it with tests. Then with every next iteration you will see that your tests are staying green and it means that your application is not broken again. And if you see that your tests are getting red, immediately go and fix this problem before starting to introduce more changes. So I think wipe coding is becoming more and more popular, first of all because developers are lazy and secondly because AI really can generate quite a lot of code on its own, but it can't do it perfect yet. And if you are interested to learn web technologies deeper, make sure to check my website with a lot of different courses about web technologies, which are available for you with just a single monthly subscription, and I will have a link in the description box below.